Hi guys, it's Andrew here from Easter Made today and welcome back to the Easter Made channel. Um, I myself right now am in the process of buying some equipment. Obviously you, you know about uh, our expansion, our plans to, plans to grow here anyways and up production. So I, I've been looking at a lot of equipment myself and a lot of different different pieces. And the, the big thing that always comes to my mind is, is what goes wrong and what wears out on them because everything's going to work fantastic when, when you first get it and then and down the road like obviously uh as you run things stuff's gonna wear out so that's what i'm gonna try and do today i'm gonna show you how uh what the wear components are on these machines and and kind of what to watch for and uh and why we build them the way that we do so that's what i'm gonna try and do i'll show you i think i think i think i'll probably start with a pusher you can see you can see the pusher on this machine here you'll be able to see it better Better on the other side here. We'll see it over here. So you can see how that pusher's put together there. There's a wear plate on the bottom of it, wear plate on the top, and there's brass on the sides of it, um, which is fine. Like that's yeah. a lot of companies won't go to the extent of putting brass on the sides of the run a different material, which is fine. It's all a wear component. It's going to save your beam. Um, and then the top and the bottom phenolic's pretty common. Like I said, there's different. There's different materials for that too. Um, in my experience with that, um, uh, a lot of companies will run a, a material called a UHMW. Um, I'm not quite sure what. I know there's a there's there's a long name for it, but it, it's like a Teflon plastic. In my experience, it's too soft. Um, on the first bunch of Easter Maids I, I built, I was running UHMW on them, and, and it just didn't last after. 30, 40, 50 cords of wood that they would wear out just because with the load on it, it's just, it's just too much. Where this phenolic is, is a stiff material. I have some over here, I'll show you. So this phenolic is actually a, uh, it's a wood product. It's, it's what they make computer boards out of. And you can see that there is a hole in the middle of this. And uh, as you pump grease into your pusher, it fills up this slot. And as that moves back and forth, it distributes more grease down on the beam and keeps lubricated. And then what'll happen with this too is this will actually become saturated with grease and then and then after that you don't need to put near as much grease on it. Well, why, what I normally tell guys is when you first get one of the, these machines, pour the grease to it. Put lots of grease to it, whether you use grease or bar oil on the beam, whatever you have, make sure that you get lubrication into this. Now after, after maybe 15 or 20 hours of doing that, you don't need anywhere near as much lubrication in there because what'll happen is uh, the grease and, and uh, lubrication, whatever oil you're using, will attract the sawdust and attract, uh, attract the dirt and then it'll, it'll get stuck under there and then it just, it ceases to work. It, it'll, well, obviously it'll still, still go back and forth, but that pocket will plug up full of, uh, full of dirt and debris and then you don't have any more lubrication. So you really, once it's saturated, you don't need anywhere near as much. And then this is actually the piece of brass that we use for that. You can see that that's, that's a good chunk of brass there. And then that's, that's your wear component for the bottom of it. Um, you need to have something fairly heavy in there, guys, because especially when things are going great, you don't. Um, when things are going fine, you're spreading normal wood, that's no issue at all. Um, we all know we don't live in a perfect world. Um, when, when you get into doing really ugly stuff or you have a block turn sideways, you have to have that built that heavy to be able to take that load that's not normally there. So that's why that is so heavy. And that kind of brings us over to, to this part of it here. Like that's, that there would be a half inch bolt like what most companies would likely use. I've even seen companies use 3 8 bolts, which I, I, I wouldn't recommend. And then that's the bolt that we use, the three quarter grade eight bolt. And you can see that there's six of them in there. Um, so again, uh, it just, it's built to stay together. Like in the, in the event that something goes wrong, um, the machine's gonna stop, but it's not gonna break. Uh, and that, that, that's the big part of this is is, is that it holds together and lasts for you. And then the other part of this too is, here I'll show you this cylinder because that'll be kind of the other part of that because you can see that this cylinder has a, uh, has a bored hole in it and then 
this pin goes through there and that's what holds the pusher onto the machine. I got this cylinder over here. So you can see that that actually goes through. There's a board hole in that rod that that, that goes into. So what that gives that is a really large surface area. Um, what a lot of companies will do is they'll have a cylinder like this. They call this a clevis cylinder and it would be, a lot of them will have that same size pin and then there's just a piece of steel in the middle of it. So you can see that already there, there's quite a bit of play in that and then you'll have another piece in here and it just puts an awful lot of pressure in one spot on instead of spreading it out like we do. And then having the bigger pin like that you get a lot more surface area. So you can see the size difference there. Um, and, and there's only a handful of companies that are still using these. A lot, of, a lot of companies have gone to a different kind of system. Um, not Most of them don't go to, go to this extent. Um, but in my experience, that's what makes the difference. Because you'll, um, I haven't, since we've gone to these bigger frames on, on these machines, since we went up to these one inch, one inch thick frames and started doing them like this. I, I, we haven't actually sent out a, a set of wear components that have been wore out yet. Like we haven't sent out any of this stuff that's, that, that, that's been wore out because what happens with this is when you have it built like this, it takes all the load off. So you can see it can't, it can't rock like this and it can't rock like that either. So in terms of this stuff, it pushes straight all the time and then and then the load is, is either on the beam or on or on the rod of the cylinder and all that stuff's heavy enough to actually take that abuse so in terms of this stuff wearing out it's going to take a long time um we have guys that run these things obviously commercially every single day it's their business and, and like i said i haven't set a set of that stuff out yet that's been wore out um and then the other wear components that we have in, in these here i'll show you this is is in here so each one of these pivots and on the cylinders and stuff they have a wear component there too and we do use plastic for that um we use a uh, that's terrible i can't even think of the name of it right now nylotron it's called nylotron <laughs> that's terrible you ever take a brain fart like that <laughs> These these pushings are actually called nylotron is what they are. They're uh, it's a really dense, really hard plastic, and as that wears in there, it uh, it, it self lubricates. So that's you don't need to grease something like that. And you can see that this is how uh, so that pin goes in, and then that that bushing would go in there. And then the important part of this, guys, is is that 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 pin is locked. You can see that's a hole in there. You put a bolt in it. They haven't, they haven't tapped that hole yet, but that keeps that that pin from moving in there. Because if that's wearing on the clevises, then obviously there's absolutely no point in having a wear component in there because it's just going to wear the clevis out. You're going to be into the same boat. Um, and again, like what a lot of times will do is they'll just put this in there and then just have a board hole and a piece of steel and then this rolls around and slops around in there and then that wears on the actual component or part on the machine so that's that's how that works anyways and the nylotron uh we don't we don't normally have too many issues but in, in the event that you did i, I think those bushes we sell them for 10 or 15 dollars or they're they're not very expensive you'd replace all of them on the machine for for under 60 bucks i would think so um and in terms of that's really the only the only wear components on them guys there's not really a whole lot else that 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 wears um the other i guess the other thing to look at too would, would maybe be the valves here um you can see the galtic valves everything's sealed up in here and then there's no if you look at the other valves there's always a linkage down here there's a pin there's another linkage um and everything everything's exposed and again it's all just steel on steel stuff and, and just small pins and stuff so you'll see them like if you if you've ever run an older log splitter you know what i mean because the handles will flop around on them and they, they just they just wear out where where like those uh, those galtech valves are just a 
there's like a ball joint in here, like sort of the same as what you'd have in your car, and then another ball joint that actually hooks onto the valve. So there's really not, they're gonna take a long time to wear out. You gotta think about, about the load, load on a ball joint in your car and the abuse that it takes over time. And, and this is just a simple thing you're running with your hands. So there's not really any, anything to wear out in there. Eventually they will, but it, it takes an awful lot of use to, to run into an issue with it. And, they, and in that event, you just replace the cap on and, and you're, you're back in business. Um, I think that's uh, I think that's about all my rambling for today, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, but that's that's how we do it, and that's kind of why we do it, and that's the differences um, between between us and the competitors. Um, that being said, guys, um, if you're looking at these commercial splitters, you're, you're in a buyer's market right now. Like there, there's all kinds of guys that are doing, all kinds of companies that are doing a great job of these machines, and I really don't think you're going to go wrong. Um, buying one brand or the other really because uh, the this level of service in this industry right now and the quality of stuff that's being built is is great like uh, it really keeps uh, it, it's nice is what it does it, it really keeps us pushing forward um, it keeps all us guys that are building splitters and growing these businesses to continue to do better and better and better um, so it's great to have these other guys that are building good stuff too um, anyways, guys, if you liked the video, give her a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button on the bottom. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch the video today. It really does mean the world to us. It feels great to be building a community full of great people like yourself. Um, so if you haven't done so already, you want us the next video, hit that like and subscribe button and I'll keep you in the loop here. Thanks a lot, guys.